and I walked out the door and it was quite an emotional thing. Hi guys, Chris here. Uh, you've probably seen the title of this video and yes, I have quit my software engineering job in New York City. This was one of the reasons I've been so busy for the last couple of months. I wasn't able to produce a lot of YouTube videos because of this. And I want to share a bit of my experience of what it was like to prepare, um, interview, and get all the way here. So around March was when I kind of decided that I would want to maybe look into other options of my career in the future. So in April and May is when I really started to prep for this coding interview. This is like the meat of the interview process. I had to do lead coding. I read uh, Cracking the Coding Interview again, Elements of Coding Interviews. These two books were kind of my pillars and the lead code questions were really helpful trying to bring back the memories of what it was like being a new grad trying to find a full-time job. And about two months in around June is when I started to actually apply to these jobs. Now this time around compared to last year, I didn't really have a lot of friends in industry, but now about a year in, I had some friends, some seniors that I knew before who were at different companies. So now instead of just applying to these companies, I was able to get referrals. Contrary to what I believe, I thought if I got referrals from these companies, I would be getting interviews right, right away. I did for a couple companies that I reached out to and got referrals for, but a lot of the other companies kind of shot me down because of my lack of experience. At that time, I had about a little less than a year of experience in the industry. And these companies were looking for more senior or at least a two to three year experience um, software engineer. The really funny thing is that LinkedIn turned out to be a great resource for me. That's where a lot of the recruiters reached out to me and saying, hey, sometimes these aren't recruiters from the company, but they're like vendors who are uh, representing these clients. They'll be like, oh, hey, I have a client who's uh, hiring for these roles. If you're interested, let me know. We can do a quick phone call. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's set up a phone call. I would talk to them about the job descriptions of what the role is. And then they're like, okay, cool. We'll send you an online assessment if you solve this and we'll advance you to an on-site. And I'm like, okay, sounds great. I do a couple of those. Now it's about July. Now I had a couple interviews lined up. I was going, I was doing a lot of online assessments and I've got a couple on-sites. So I would go to these companies and do an on-site interview where, you know, you do all that whiteboarding questions that you've been preparing for the last two or three months. And finally in August, I was able to sign an offer that I was really happy with, the company that I really wanted to join. I really liked the team. I really liked the product of it. And I was really happy. But due to my visa status, I wasn't able to join right away. And I told the manager about it and he was pretty chill. So during the month of September, I had to wait. In October, I started that visa process of transferring my uh, current work visa to the new, new company. And that took about a month. Everything went pretty smooth. Just the thing is that there was a bit of waiting in between and I just get really anxious, you know, with the current um, pol political climate and the immigration stuff that's happening. There were some, a lot of people were getting worried that um, transferring companies with your work visa might sometimes not, uh, work out pretty good. I was a little worried, but not that much. But just the anticipation, just waiting made me really anxious. Um, but everything worked out at the end, so I was really happy. And in November is when I actually was able to finally quit. And right before I quit my job, my team and I did a goodbye lunch and we all met for the last time, talk about things and how I, you know, my experience, like where I'll be going, what I'll be doing and that kind of stuff. And then on my last day, I did a exit interview with HR. I gave them my badge back, my laptop, and I walked out the door. And it was quite an emotional thing. You know that you are never gonna come back and you it's just very weird. It's very emotional because you've been working here every day for the last year and like three months and you're never gonna come back. It was, it was pretty interesting. It was like that feeling, it's that bittersweet moment. You know you wanted to leave, but when you're actually leaving, it's very emotional. And a weekend after that, I took no breaks between jobs. I started my new job. And on top of that, I actually switched cities. So I'm no longer in New York City anymore. The background, well, this is inside the apartment, so you can't really tell, but 
I'm no longer in New York City. I'll probably make a video about that too, like the difference between New York City and where I am right now. But yes, that was quite a transition for me. On a, over a weekend, I am in a new city, a different time zone, new job, new apartment. I had to do all that moving all on, or over that weekend. And yeah, there was a lot of preparation coming up to this step. And overall, that was like, what, a six month period from start to finish. The entire um, process of moving jobs took me that much time, which is just quite exhausting. So I want to share a couple do's and don'ts when you're doing this job transition. First of all, don't tell your manager that you're interviewing for a new job. This should be pretty obvious to you, but if you tell your manager, well, it really depends on your relationship with your manager as well, but if you want to stay on good terms with your manager, you shouldn't let them know because if you do, sometimes I heard cases where the manager would just let you go like the next day after you let them know that you're starting to interview. Um, this is, I don't know why some, some companies would do this, but some do. So it's always better to just keep your mouth shut until you actually give your notice. And on top of that, don't make it obvious that you're interviewing for another company. Interviewing for another company while you still have a full-time job is a pretty big challenge. So you got to use your, maybe your vacation days, your PTO, pay time off, or you can say you'll be working remote for the, for the day and you go interview, but you kind of check in time to time just to show that you're still working, right? Or you can also say you're having a sick day. Um, this is a bit of lying, I guess, but some people do that too. Don't make it too obvious saying you're going to be out all of a sudden or you're going to be sick, although you were just fine the day earlier. So don't make it too obvious. People do catch on to you. They're smarter than you think. You think you're outsmarting them, but they also understand what's going on. If they see these like pa patterns of you keep uh, missing out on a Monday or a Tuesday, for example. Just make sure that you keep your resumes up to date. It's probably outdated. If you were in college and you never updated ever since, you have to add your current job with your job descriptions or what you've done so far at your current company. And make sure if you have like old projects from college that you've done like a couple of years ago, make sure you remove them. If you don't can't talk about them, if the interviewer starts drilling into those projects and ask you like very hard questions that you don't even remember that you did like two, three years ago, remove them. Or if you're going to keep them, just make sure you refresh your memory on what you did, how you implemented it, what were the challenges, things like that. You, be, you should be able to talk about everything on your list. Also in your skills sections, if you have any outdated um, web frameworks or some, or like languages, remove them. If you can talk about them, that's fine. If you can't remember anything about them, just it's better to just remove them. My advice. Next, if you are a software engineer like me, please, please, please study the algorithms. Like, I mean, that's like the, that's all, that's the entire interview. So, I mean, that's a very obvious thing to say, but if you think you're so smart and you still have that, like that algorithm edge, like that knowledge still in your head, it's probably that you forgot most of it because at your job, honestly, nobody uses a lot of algorithms. You don't use all that data structure and algorithms at work in, in a real practical setting to be honest. So you're probably much better at implementation, but when it comes to those actual most optimal algorithms, it took me a, quite a while to just do a refreshing memory session and making sure that I am able to perform these um, operations. Uh, yeah. So refresh your memory, read, study, lead code, lead code, just, just lead code every day. One lead code a day keeps unemployment away. The last thing is when you actually give the two week notice to your employer or your boss, manager, director, whatever, try to do this in person. Doing it in person is the best um, way to deliver this message. I mean, it's very personal, right? And you want to keep it very professional at the same time. Let them know, like thank them for the, the time that you've been at that company and that I have found a better, that you have found a better opportunity and that I will, or you will be moving on to your next job. And they will understand, like it's their job to, you know, process that. So don't feel bad. Don't feel like you're betraying them or anything. 
it's very professional and they might also leave you know one day so don't feel bad at all but just make sure you don't burn bridges because you never know who you might meet in the future like that that boss might become a, your new boss at your new company as well later on in life like not right away but that could happen so always keep that professional relationship make sure you maintain a very good relationship with your co-workers and your managers i also submitted a formal letter through email there's like these templates online you can find for your resignation and i submitted that my director was very welcoming and very generous on like very understanding of my situations and he took my resignation letter and then he said okay don't worry i'll like send it off to the SVPs and the HR to process the whole um, exit process. And yeah, that was it. So this was my personal experience on how I found a new job and transferred to the interviews and everything. If you have any questions about this, I will do a follow-up video. I'll do like a Q&A video on your questions. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And I will try to make another video on the job transferring process. There's just so much that I didn't really talk about in detail. This was just a very big, broad overview, but I hope this was useful to you. And if you have any questions, please, please, please leave them in the comments. I will, I, I mean, I read all these comments that you guys give me, it's great. I, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other people who are in a similar situation. This was my first job that I quit. It was like all new to me. I mean, this was the first time I quit anything like college, you have a very finite time that you're supposed to be at and then you graduate right but this a job doesn't actually have an end date you can actually retire from your first job um like bill gates right bill gates founded his own company and still well i don't know if he's still an employee anymore but he had that one job for his entire life so a job could be forever or as short as a couple of months or a couple of years and you make that distinction, you make that decision to leave and find another job. So it was very interesting for me. Now that I've done this once, I don't think I'll be afraid to do this again, for sure. Like the next time I have to find another job, I will know what the processes are like. I know what to look for. I know how to reach out to people now, now that I'm gaining more of like my network of people, coworkers that I meet. I think I'll be more confident as I go along in my future path, career path, and I'll know what I should be looking for, what to do. So if you have any questions, um, let's do this together. Like if you're struggling or if you're in that same situation as I was in a couple months ago where I was not getting any interviews, just let me know. I, I'll try to make a video where I can help you as much as possible. If this video did help you, please hit that like button and I'll see you in the next. Bye.